in this video I'm going to go through the features of the image menu in Penta. Now before I bring up Penta as I usually do in my videos I have the step-by-step -step instructions for each of the features that I will be going over in the video on my website and I'll provide the link below and uh, I'll go through each step in the menu or each feature in the menu from crop selection all the way down to flatten. Now as you can see here I do have an image in this picture and flatten is dim and I'll show you more about how to make that brighten up and like I said I have each step-by-step -step illustrations so that if you forget how one of the features works you can use my website as a reference and that way you won't have to go back and watch the video but these are pretty simple uh, features now here's the pictures I'm going to be using for the example now I'll start with a car that was in a car show that my brother and my nephew went to many years ago we took several photographs of uh, Camaras and other hot rods uh, if you look here's the image menu and it starts with crop to selection auto crop, resize image, resize canvas. Now I'm not going to spend a lot of time with resize image and resize canvas because that has the dots, dot, 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 indicating that they're going to produce a dialog box when I click on them, which means it has additional features. So I've already made a video, YouTube video and I can provide the link below if you're needing help with resizing an image or resizing your canvas. Uh, but the other ones uh, that don't have the dot, dot, dots, which are most of them, they do not produce a dialog box. That means when you click on them, they'll instantly apply that feature to the image. You got your flip horizontal, your flip vertical, your rotate 90 degrees clockwise, your rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise, your rotate 180 degrees, and flatten. Now to start with, when you look at this picture of this Camaro that I have here, let's say for example I didn't want most of that trash can there in the corner because it looks like maybe someone threw a drink in there and maybe missed it and it's running out. So I can take some of that off by going to my selection tools, I can come up here, that gentleman that's at the top, I can cut him out some. I'll probably cut some of the back end of the car off, but that doesn't matter. I'm really showing you how to use uh, the crop feature. Now, as you hear, see here, on my image, I do have a selection. So in my image menu, the top one where it says crop to selection, when I click this button, it's going to immediately apply itself. So the gentleman at the back, I still got most of the back end, but most of the garbage can, I now cut it off. So if I hit the Save button, now if you wanted to keep your original image, you'll need to go File, Save As, and name it a different name. Because once I hit that Save button, and hit OK, if I wanted to go back to my original image, as you can see here, it's dim, now it's there. When I double click on that for my image viewer, the gentleman's gone and the trash can's gone. So when you're using Penta, if you do make a change to your image and you just hit the Save button, it's going to automatically overwrite your original image uh, creating that same file name. So be careful with that because I've done that many times before. I edit something, hit the save, then I went back to reopen it and it wasn't the original image. It was what I saved and I had made a boo-boo. Now as long as you've got the original image in Penta and haven't closed it, you can hit the undo and go back and save it back to the original name. Alright, the next one I want to show you. And I, th I have pictures of my nephew's kids taken a few years back on Halloween so I right click and say open with Penta now the next feature in the in the menu is auto crop now what the auto crop tool is it's a nice little tool if you look at the edge of this image so let's say that this was a picture that I placed in the scanner and I placed it across the the top as good as I could and when I scanned it I realized I got a little white edges along here I got a little bit of the white edges across the bottom and a little bit of white edge along the other side I kinda have some white edges around the image and the reason that happens and it happens a lot is if you put an image in the scanner when you go to close the lid with some wind kinda shifts it and when it scans it produces it because it's not really 90 degrees from the top of that bar which is your reference bar so sometimes you have to crop that out now if I went to the crop tool I would have to come in here and drag it hit crop and sometimes it may not be exactly the way I want it to look you know it, it's kind of a tedious task with auto crop feature now this is one of them that it's probably recommended to use the shortcut keys you can do it quickly. The shortcut keys is Control Alt X, but I'm going to keep clicking on it so that you can see what happens each time that I click. Because if I'm pressing the keyboards, you're not seeing each time that I do that unless I set it, uh, or if I had a little program to put up the keyboards displayed on the screen. Uh, but for right now, watch what happens when I hit Auto Crop. Keep your eye on this corner. I'm going to keep auto cropping it until this corner is evened out, and then we'll look at the other uh, bottom and the left side. So I'm going to auto crop it. 
There's the first time. It makes it large so you can see it. That was the first time. I'm going to keep doing it. There's the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. About twelve got rid of this side and this side. But if you notice, there's still a little bit more at the bottom. Now you might say, well, this is time consuming. Well, if you're using the shortcut keys, it's not. You can press those quick as light. You can keep pressing them over and over and over. So you're not really worried about what it's kind of doing is if you look, not only is it taking the white out, it's it's making it look like the image is not shifted, but it, it's uh, it's not cropping much. What it what this feature does is the auto crop. It takes out one pixel uh, layer around your image, so that way it's really getting a fine tune. I'll do one more, and there we go. So now I have an image now that it looks like it was professionally or accurately scanned. I don't want to say professionally, but accurately scanned in my scanner now. There's no white edges around any of the borders. So like I said, this is probably one of those that you want to remember the shortcut for. Control Alt X and it's not interchangeable. You can't go back and reprogram that. That's built into the program. So if you remember the Control Alt X, when you're pressing those keys on your keyboard, if you've got an outside edge or small border that you want to remove. Now if you've got a large border, it's probably best to use the selection tool, select inside, and then go to M image crop selection. All right, let me close this one out. And I'll say close without saving. And I'm going to go back to my original image that I have here and open up the 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 camera that I had here. The next one on the image is to resize the image. Now, like I said, I've done this in another video because when you hit resize an image, you're going to bring up a dialog box allowing you to resize the image by a percentage. You can increase or decrease the image, or you can click here and go absolute and change the absolute value. And if you change the width and you leave maintain aspect ratio checked, it will automatically change this value here. But let's say I wanted to decrease this picture by like 75%. So when I say 75%, hit OK, the image decreased. It's now 75% of the original size. So that is, and I went back undo back to the original image. That was resizing the image. Now resizing the canvas, uh, that's going to, if I could decrease the size of the canvas, it's going to look like I decreased the image. So if I say 75% hit OK, it cut, it's cropping the picture. And the reason it's doing that is it's not resizing the image, it's resizing the canvas. So your image can't be larger than your canvas. So when I hit undo, like if I go back to image and say resize canvas, if I went like to 125 here and hit OK, it's not going to resize the image, it's going to resize the canvas. So now the canvas is larger than the image. So let me undo. Like I said, since this right here has the three dots, that just indicates that it produces a dialog box, which means it has more features. So for more in-depth features on the resize canvas and resize canvas, you can go to my website or another video that I've already created. Now flip horizontal. Horizontal is like the looking at the horizon. You know, when you see the sun come up on the horizon, it's from left to right. Vertical is up and down. So when you're going to flip something horizontal, you're flipping it this way. So when I click on flip horizontal, it takes the image and flips it around. It's almost like flipping a corn from heads to tails. So if I go undo, or if I go back to image, flip horizontal, it flips it back to its original shape. So that's your flip horizontal. The next one is flip vertical. <coughs> Excuse me, vertical is up and down. So when I click the flip vertical, it now makes it appear that the image is upside down. If I go back to say flip vertical, it puts it back in its original position. The next one up here is your rotate clockwise. A clockwise goes from top to the right, from the bottom up. So if I say flip 90 degrees clockwise, 90 degrees is like a 90 degree angle. So let me flip it. It's now flipped clockwise. So you can see your image now appears to be facing downward. The next one is clip, uh, rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise, which is going to go this way. So when I click it, it's going to look like it's facing upward. Let me go back to my original image. The next one is rotate 180 degrees. Rotating 180 degrees is almost like saying flip vertical because it's going to go to 90 degrees, which is 180, which makes your image appear upside down. Now, those are pretty self-explanatory, the rotates and flips. Now, this was the cool feature. Notice that flatten, it's not bold. 
and the reason that for that is because the flatten command works with your layers and if you look I don't have multiple layers because the flatten command takes multiple layers and merges them together into one if you look on the layers uh, where you got merge layer down that's not bold either but you remember I've already done a video and I went through the command of the layers menus or the features of the layers menu if you had two layers here when you merge down it merges from the top one down and makes one image this does the same thing the flatten except instead of doing it from the top one just to the bottom one it does every one of them in the layers window from the top to the bottom and it matters about your order so let me close this out and I have three images that I'm going to use. I'm going to first right click and say open with Penta and I've got a picture of a window and if you look the little checkered board pattern indicates that it is transparent. I'm going to go to layers import from file and then I'm going to import my uh, nephew's little boy and I took the picture that you saw earlier this picture here and I cropped him out and then I removed the background so I've already went through the process of doing that uh, and later in another video I'll show you how to do all of this but right for right now I'm showing you what the flatten feature works so I go back to layers import from a file and I'll choose the background uh, scenery that I found on the internet now as you can see here it matters about the order the top one remember the stack I've already did a video on layers so I want to move the haunted house the background to the very bottom so I'll move it to the bottom and I want to put the window on top well I'll hit the wrong one put it on top so now it appears that you got the window in front, my nephew or nephew son, Saka, and then you got your background image. Now if I were to go to layers and say merge layer down, it will only merge the window with my nephew son. I would still have an extra layer. Now here's what the, the flatten feature. If you were working with a lot of layers, it would be a little time consuming to say merge layer down, merge layer down, and keep doing that in your layers window here I can just click flatten and when I click flatten notice what happens to all of these images in that particular window when I hit flatten they all combine together to form one image so now I can go file save as and give it a name and I will uh, I've already called it uh, I don't remember what I called it before but I'll just name this uh, monster in window and I'll save it in the same file so, and I'll save it as a JPEG because uh, the PNGs are very large files so if I was wanting to send this across the internet a JPEG would save me space so I hit save button hit OK you just want to use save as PNGs when you have the transparent background or if you're working with something that needs a, a lot of details so the little monster in the window now is here so as you can see here all three images that we had which is that image the background image and the window have now been combined or flattened into one image and as you can see here it's it's not that large of a file size 170 kilobytes uh, compared to some of the bigger images like the house if you look it's a uh, 1.2 megabytes that's because it's a PNG that's a very large file just in itself uh, not considering that my nephew is 172 kilobytes just that little small picture is larger than the combination of these so that kind of shows you the JPEG images are smaller than your PNG files so hopefully this has given you an understanding of all the features that are in your image menu uh, like I said you can use my website as a reference uh, so that you don't have to go back and watch this video hopefully uh, this has helped you understand more about using Penta and about using the products that's used in Linux or the software used in Linux and Penta is one of these softwares that's not just used in Linux you can use it on a Mac or you can use it on Windows so if you found this video on YouTube and you've watched it to the end uh, it's not just something that you have to use in Linux uh, well this is the end of this video uh, have a great day